this um, how do I say this recording is dedicated to all my favorite youtubers I think it was 2007 2008 when I really started using YouTube and following other people subscribing to channels I just wanted to learn and I thought it was interesting that people recorded themselves obviously this was before brand deals or AdSense really made sense and people just posted content because they cared not because they wanted to build a following an audience they wanted to make a second income or something like that but over the time I feel like over the years I've used YouTube for different things and um, when I was younger it was just to keep up with trends I would say but now in my 20s I definitely look to youtubers who are similar like me um, in terms of characteristics lifestyle life stages where they are did they go to grad school? Did they not go to grad school? Are they in a relationship? Are they not in a relationship? Are they spiritual? Are they religious? Are they just living? Are they adventurous? Do they like to travel? Are they foodies? Or do they like to cook at home? I think there's, there's a real authentic truth to knowing as a human, we are layered, we are complex, we are complicated things may be simple but we don't make them simple and I feel like youtubers those who are genuine and those who actually do want to stand for something or have a message to say they go far because there's something within them that resonates within us and the viewer slash consumer is looking at the creator and the creator can't see us but we can see them and they are mirroring mirroring this message hopefully of hope and just life can be better and I feel like the youtubers I follow have been successful for a number of reasons and I feel like I'll just I'll just go ahead and share a few that I think will be helpful so when it comes to YouTube if you want to start a channel right you need to remember why you're starting a channel because when you blow up when your channel does really well and becomes successful and is like a rocket going to the moon you have to remember at the core why you started. What is your overall message? What are you trying to give the people? What is that thing that will be unwavering as you grow? And so there's a vision. I think number one, when you're a creator, you need to have a vision. A vision doesn't have to be cemented. It can be flexible, it can change. But there needs to be a reason why you want to do what you want to do because this will help people want to um, support you help you lift you up people are compelled to support others they believe deserve help or they want to give the gift of helping others but people are called to action when they feel like the person they're helping could be someone they know you know and it's easy for them to support so a vision helps um, the technical stuff I'll definitely say some type of recording equipment like a cell phone at the bare minimum is great some type of cell phone that takes great photos videos good quality is helpful I would say audio is really big I can get through some type of media or content that has blurry images if the audio is really good if I can understand what the person is saying but 
the visuals are not the best, I'm still going to be able to retain the knowledge that's being shared. But if the audio is bad, but the images are great, you know, I just feel like I'm not getting everything I signed up for. Um, so make sure you have really good audio. There's some really good like lavaliers or speakers that you can purchase that will help you with that. And lighting is great. Natural light is great. Um, if you buy all these lighting fixtures, you want to make sure that you adjust them, the level, so that they best accurately um, flaunt you well to the viewers. We want to see you. We don't want to see harsh shadows or bright lights or just something that wouldn't be natural to the naked eye. Now, I feel like when it comes to confidence on screen, you can kind of tell who's a beginner and who's way ahead in their with their experience, their years on YouTube, just because of the relationship they have with the camera. Um, like when you see a new YouTuber, you can tell they're new because they're like fidgety, uh, their voice is breaking, they've lost their train of thought, they're kind of just not prepared. They're, it's just signs of unpreparedness. But someone who has made a list, checked it twice, you know, obviously they can edit so like they can cut the gaps, make sure things are smooth. Those little details are big. Now, when it comes to the content and what you actually share, this is where things get interesting because I feel like every channel is like a different book. As in, there are so many topics to share and talk about, and there's so many topics of interest. There is something for everyone. And the more unique or the more regular the thing you have to talk about is, people will gravitate towards it. The community is out there. You just have to provide the content and apps like TikTok can help you because you can build your following on TikTok and then have everyone come to your YouTube channel. You can just start with YouTube and build that way. I feel like the whole monetization policies in order to make money with YouTube, getting a thousand followers and 4,000 hours of watch time within 12 months is not a unrealistic goal, but you really do have to push because you don't want to be in a situation where you have a thousand followers or subscribers, but nobody watches your content. You've only pushed the needle to a hundred hours of watch time out of 4,000. But you also don't want to be in a situation where you have 4,000 hours of watch time but you have less than a hundred subscribers. So it's finding that that perfect balance of giving people what they want to see, but doing something that makes them want to stay because you want to build an audience that comes back for more, but you also want to talk about something that keeps their attention. And trends are good for this too because you can highlight current events, you can talk about what people are wearing, what people are doing, what music is hot, you can react to videos. Reaction videos are really good. When I first started my channel, I did a lot of reaction videos, but at the time, I don't know why I didn't um, say yes to the, mo the monetization policies so that I could try to get the 4,000 watch hours sooner because a lot of people were consuming my content and I would have definitely had a lot of subscribers had I kept posting videos about reactions to different kinds of music videos. But I realized early on that's not the kind of, that was not the kind of channel I wanted to be known for. I didn't want a lot of people to come to my channel expecting to see reaction videos. I wanted to be able to have 
a freedom to make whatever I wanted to make. But I think when you're just starting and you need to build and you need to be seen and heard and get those views up, get the numbers up, uh, reaction videos are great. One of my best videos right now is about washing clothes using a portable washing machine that you can use in your bathroom. I would have never guessed that would be like my number one video. I, I wish it was my other videos talking about my life or day day in the life or here come come walk with me around the city but no those are not those are not popular those are not what people are watching they want to learn how to use a portable washing machine and that made me feel like okay should i make more but i think i i don't need to make more videos about washing clothes i think i just need to make videos about what i do and how I do it and help other people like how to's how to make this how to make this how to do this how to see this and then people will come naturally that way I um yeah I just I wanted to make this video because I feel like it's possible to really impress yourself by making videos and making content you just can't be scared that it can't happen for you because it can it can happen you just have to believe and you have to try you all know one of my favorite youtubers is kelly stamps she's been my favorite since early 2020 i wish i discovered her before that but i discovered her in early 2020 and i've literally seen how her rise and her youtube fame and has changed her life um like she's not famous i would say but she's really well known i don't know if she can walk around her city without people knowing who she is and that's the cost of making youtube content and you know getting your face out there i mean she has half a million dollars i mean half a million subscribers and she's made a lot of money and she's been transparent about how much she's made through her videos and content which is really appreciated for those who genuinely want to grow like her but when i see her on social media and i see that she is kind of withholding information and not wanting to be as public about where she lives now and what she does it makes me kind of sad because it makes sense like obviously her safety is number one we don't want anything to happen to miss stamps but it also is shows the reality of when you sign up for this when you decide that you want to do this you're giving up some sort of privacy because the people that subscribe to you think that they, they, they're owed something, that they're owed information about you that you may not want to share. So you have to decide what you want to share and how you want to share it. Kelly will be fine. She's uh, locked and loaded in terms of her income, and like she can, she can afford the means to do whatever she wants next. Netflix is obviously not her long-term goal but it's sustained her now and it's beautiful to see um i'm just saying that you know a lot it's like a lot of people want to be famous everybody wants to be rihanna let's say but nobody knows about rihanna's baggage and struggles like yeah okay you can be rihanna for a day and you think it's going to be all great with just like the limelight the paparazzi the business deals but you don't know what Rihanna deals with behind the scenes. There's a lot going on that we probably don't know about. We don't know who she supports privately or who's sick in her life that she cares about, like, or what she's dealing with privately, her body, her health. We don't know. So it's, it's kind of like, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. And when you do get it, there you go. And the thing is, there's no going back. You can only move forward. And you can always decide not to be on this platform anymore. Um, it's just like kind of when you share your parts of yourself, people feel like they 
they deserve a seat at the table sometimes and you can remind them that actually you built this table and you can destroy this table if you want so that works too but i just wanted to make this little video and i probably will be making more content like this it is january 1st happy new year happy happy new year my word for 2021 is alignment i feel like this will be my best year ever i'm looking forward to growing personally and externally i'm i'm looking forward to deepening my relationships fixing them growing through them i i think i'm ready for some type of romance but i'm not too sure i i want to move forward with my career i've tasted what it means to be stable but there's still a long way to go so that i feel secure in terms of finances i want to feel great about my health i mean there's all these little things so learning how to cook well learning how to exercise learning how to kind of take time off reading more dedicating myself to other causes figuring out what sets my heart on fire there's there's small things you know that we can do each and every day that lead to the big things and being more open to opportunities that can change our life i just feel like there's so much out there and i i, I want a piece of it all i want a piece of it all it doesn't have to be at the same time but a little bit of everything that's kind of my new motto i had uh take out the other night and i, I instead of buying from one place and spending like 13 bucks I bought a little bit from about four different places and that was great I loved it so that's what I want this year I want a little bit of everything I'm trying to figure out what the next the next risk I can take that will positively drive my, my, my life forward because those years that I've taken big risks, I've had big rewards. So that's kind of what I think I need again. And I'll take my time to figure that out. But it's a new year. I'm glad 2020 is done. Uh, I don't know what 2021 will bring, but it just feels good to close that chapter of 2020 and start fresh but remember remember at the end of the day you can only control what you can control and your perspective is everything your mindset is everything how you feel about yourself is everything no one has that big of a say or has that big of a, a role in your life besides you you have to drive this ship the way you want it to go you have to be that person for yourself just remember that you can do it you can do it it might take time but you can do it okay thank you for joining me on this episode almost 20 minutes long but worth it if you have any comments let me know something down below and make sure you subscribe if you like this audio content let me know i'll be sure to be doing more i do want to do some story times because i know they're popular on youtube and i have a few stories like how i tried to convince my friends to drive me and drive us to drake's house yeah the drake the rapper aubrey drake graham <laughs> okay good night and goodbye Make sure you subscribe. Thank you.